Welcome to our second introductory reflections on the pilgrimage we'll be doing here in October. And many of you might recognize where Father Eamon and I are seated right now if you've been here to Magdala or if you follow us on the website. And we have the privilege of sitting in this first century Jewish synagogue in the town of Magdala. And it's a place that um, we often call the crossroads because Magdala has several different subtitles, if you want to call it that, different ways that Magdala is identified or what gives it a special touch um, in the Holy Land. And one of them is the crossroads of Christian and Jewish culture, because this is where we all come together and we've had a number of activities which are not just interfaith, where all the Christian denominations come together and are comfortable and feel at home here and very welcome. It's part of what Magdala is, but also where Jewish people come the Muslim people come, and even in this very synagogue, we were together once for an activity where we were praying the Psalms together, um, lifting up our hearts and minds to God. And so, as John Paul II often said, we have a lot in common with the religions who believe in one God, and those are the two religions that are here, very much a crossroads. And I think this context helps us to understand what we will be doing in the month of October, which is a contemplating, let me just give you the title again, it's contemplating Christ with Mary. So we'll be delving into the different mysteries of Christ. And I think first of all, um, and I'll, I'll let Father Eamon complete this um, concept, I just want to put out there what we understand or what many people understand by the word mystery. It has a lot of meanings if you look it up in the dictionary or in the history of theology and um, even in different, you know, secular cultures, this is a great mystery, you're solving mysteries. And when we use that in this context, especially when we're speaking about the mysteries of the rosary, which I'll speak about in just a second, what we're, what we're talking about is the mystery that God is. It's something beyond us. We can see and we can understand to a certain extent, but there's a whole area that we can't comprehend, where we can't even enter, not with the best minds or the deepest prayer. God is something that is completely other. He is completely different than we are. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And so many times in Jesus's life, when he says something, when he does something, when he's with certain people, it's almost as if he opens those curtains so that we can peek in and see a little bit more of the infinite depth, goodness, mercy, love that he is. And so, when we speak about Christ's mysteries, we're speaking about what we don't know, but what he reveals to us by opening a little bit more the dimensions and depths of his heart and his life. But I don't know, I think Father Kelly can also help us understand that better and even probably put it into the context of what Magdala really is. So tell us a little bit about well, that, Father. Thanks, uh, Kathleen. To, just to finish up the thought about mystery, I'd like to explain the exact same content that Kathleen expressed so well with an image uh, of the iceberg. So in the iceberg, we see this much above the water and all this much is underneath the water. Ships, watch out, you could hit part of the iceberg mm -hmm. under the water. So in the mystery, all of our experiences of life in a way are a mystery. The mystery, we say the mystery of the human being, the mystery of God, the mystery of Christ, the mystery of the church. Uh, so many different aspects of Christ's life we call them mysteries because we see so much of the iceberg and the rest is hidden from our eyes. So that image helps to make it even maybe more concrete to capture this concept of mystery which really is saying that God is really working there even though we don't see all that on the outside. And there's a little bit of a, a challenge with this project this endeavor, this adventure of October. So we're looking at Jesus in his mysteries through the eyes of his mother Mary. And because of divisions we have experienced historically that burden our conscience and especially burden our relationships. Just imagine one day in the family somebody stops talking to a spouse or to a child or to a sibling 
and it can go on for years. And so there's a burden historically. And that can become cleared up or it can become more poisoned over time. And in our case, the divisions between Jews and Christians have become poisoned and burdened and the divisions between Christians, let's say the 30 years war in Europe, how that burdened the Reformation Church relationship to the Catholics or the burden of the sack of Constantinople uh, by the, the Fourth Crusade, uh, and I think it was 1204, and how that burdened still to this day, 800 years later, the relationship we have. So proposing a virtual pilgrimage and inviting you to a virtual pilgrimage to the different sites of the Holy Land where Christ's mysteries are associated or were revealed, then uh, it's a little bit of a challenge if we're introducing Mary in there. And I think that we are very privileged by a gift from above to talk about this here in Magdala where we will also be having the Mass each day as part of the pilgrimage. So, <clears throat> why do I say that? Because of this concept that uh, Kathleen already mentioned that Magdala is tagged as crossroads of Jewish and Christian history. So we're in a beautiful synagogue with the seating, the pillars, the mosaics, the frescoes, you see the colors on that pillar over there, they're matching Kathleen's uh, uh, shirt, <laughs> her blouse. So, you know, we have a very great treasure for the Jewish people, not to mention the Magdala stone as an ideological replica, if you will, of the second temple and even the first temple elements also. So we have an extraordinary treasure here that when Jewish people come along, they get goosebumps. And the same happens for Christians because this synagogue matches up to a frequent line in the Gospels that Jesus preached or taught and healed the sick in the synagogues of Galilee. So now the Christians get goosebumps when they come here because this is actually the first one ever excavated that matches those Gospel lines. And then here, right beside this synagogue, so many years we've seen Jewish and Christian visitors and pilgrims being present and each treasuring this place, getting goosebumps, and yet not betraying their respective identities and not becoming confrontational. So that's what happens at a good, healthy crossroads where people that are different meet and encounter each other and engage each other and don't necessarily assume the behavior of the other and don't necessarily agree with everything, but agree to use the same road and pass through the same intersection and meet and exchange. Well, and actually, if I may, Father, I think what also happens, not just with the Jewish and the Christian people, you also have, um, because there's so many Muslims here, they also come, they might not have as many goosebumps as the Christians and the Jewish people, but they also appreciate this immensely because of the common um, background in many ways that we all have with the common father of Abraham, mm -hmm. I think. Then that's the first pillar of the commonality that we feel here that we, let's say, is tangible in the stones. As Kathleen is saying, okay, the archaeology speaks very strongly to the Christian and the Jewish person, but the spirit here in Magdala is everybody meets. And that's what we have experienced in the uh, volunteer experience. And even right over here, I'm looking at a picture of our volunteers from 2015. And over the last uh, 10, 11 years, we've had volunteers from many countries around the world, and they have been of all faiths including Muslims, including atheists, Absolutely. Um, uh, so Druze, so many different people working here. And what happens in an experience with the volunteer community? Some volunteers are here for a year. So what happens is you're living together with people, maybe a Pentecostal, evangelical, uh, a Methodist, uh, a Catholic, a sleepy Catholic, a refrigerated Catholic, 
a Jewish person and you're living together and sharing together and helping each other and rejoicing over a discovery in the archaeology, rejoicing over helping a group of pilgrims that are very tired and weren't able to have what they needed at another place and they're coming late and they're welcomed and they leave so happily and everybody has helped. So then the Maybe one Pentecostal comes and has a prejudice against a Methodist, or maybe a Catholic comes with a prejudice against a Protestant, or whatever. We bring that baggage. Because of the divisions historically, that we're burdened by these memories and what's handed on, and some serious theological divides and issues, and maybe major disagreements, and maybe even categories like heretics and schismatics, mm -hmm. and we don't agree with you at all, and sometimes that can become very confrontational, maybe in a bar, maybe at school in a debate, maybe uh, in other arenas, it can become very confrontational. In, in Ireland we've had a tremendous history of difficulty uh, in Northern Ireland, and yet to be able to come here and then the Protestant says, wow, you Catholics believe in Christ, I hadn't realized. And so there's a wake up, and there's a mutual recognition. So we become a family. And in every family, it's a very interesting model. You know, what's more different than a man and a woman? And then what's so incredibly different between a baby of three months and a teenager of 14 years, a girl of 11 or 17, and an uncle 49 who never got married, and a grandpa who's beginning a little to get daughtery, and a very nice grandma, but she has a little bit of Alzheimer's. And you have this family, and it's all one family, including the little baby, and the grandma and the uncle and the mom and the dad and the teenagers and it's one family so they learn to live together and to work together so I think one of the beautiful things that can happen in this October pilgrimage virtual pilgrimage and retreat is that instead of being an issue for confrontation and um, somehow conflict or discomfort uh, it can become an opportunity at the crossroads to pray together at the crossroads of the Holy Land. People come to the Holy Land, Jewish people come and they have their reasons for great rejoicing and Christians come with their reasons for great rejoicing and we can all rejoice together. And this doesn't mean that everything is indifferent, we don't betray our identities, but we can live our identities peacefully with each other and engage each other and also challenge each other in a very healthy, noble way. So I think this context allows us then to have uh, a great experience this October, Kathleen, and thank you so much for all you have put in to organize the English uh, wing of this mm -hmm. pilgrimage because also Father Juan and Paula and Roberto are very heavily engaged in the Spanish uh, section of this pilgrimage, Spanish yes, language section. That's true. Well, one of the things, if I may, just to complete the image, um, Father spoke about a family, and I think that's really the environment, the spirit that people often encounter when they're here in Magdala. And what brings differences together if it's not a mother? <laughs> and everyone agrees, and across the board, that Mary was definitely Jesus' mother, and we know very well that Jesus is the Word made flesh, He's the Christ. And so that's what is very neat in this month of October. It is the month of the Rosary for the Catholic Church. It's been that tradition for centuries. Um, if you're interested, you can look up October 7th is actually the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. Um, and it was a moment where Christian civilizations came together in a common cause at the Battle of Lepanto. And, and Mary and the Rosary were a big part of that coming together. And so we're hoping that in this month of, of uh, October, it can also be this time where we are journeying together. We're all in different places and we can all be enlightened in different ways. So let's come together around uh, Jesus's mother who can teach us so much about his life. And so um, one of the things I wanted to make sure that you knew, if you haven't received the email already, which you should have, you'll be receiving different supplemental materials. And one of those is a prayer guide and it's called a rosary prayer guide. On the front cover, in the English edition is an icon. And it's an, a sanctuary, it's, a, it's in a sanctuary, which is Jacob's well. And that well is currently in an area, well, if you read it in the gospel, it's um, the woman of Samaria. She comes to the well and has a conversation with Jesus, a transformational conversation with him. And it's certainly a mystery that he reveals to her of her own sense of being loved, of her own sense of being forgiven, and 
it's revealed in such a way she becomes an immense apostle. You know, she runs out. So this well, Jacob's well, is the same place where Jesus met the Samaritan woman. And that, if you go up the stairs in the church that's there, that's where the icon is. And if you take a look at that um, document that we sent you, it has Mary in the background at the top with Jesus on her lap. And that's what we want to do in this October, is we will see her holding Jesus to us. She has, as, you know, I loved Father's image of the iceberg, of course. When I lived in Argentina, I had the chance to go to the south and see some of those icebergs up close in a boat. And you can barely make out, you know, this enormous piece of ice underneath. But imagine if you had, and let's change the temperature a bit, imagine if you were somewhere like the Red Sea, you know, down there by Elat, the southernmost city here in, in Israel. And you see things at the surface. You can see the mountains of Egypt. But if you put on some goggles and you know how to snorkel, you actually see a beautiful uh, world open up before you, you know, as you're snorkeling. And it's, it's almost as if Mary's giving us, you know, some goggles and some oxygen. And she's like, okay, this is how you go underneath. This is what I did anyway. Let's see if it helps you. And we see these mysteries that aren't really hidden, but they are hidden. And you just need to dive down. So here we have Mary with Jesus on her lap. And we're going to ask her how to dive in. And on the bottom part of that icon, that image, there are three uh, sort of tunnels of water that are just pipes of water that are just spilling forth from Jesus himself. And that would be certainly an image of the Trinity, you know, all of these mysteries of God himself that are gathered into a well. And in this icon, it's an open well, and you'll see a lot of different figures. There are many explanations of who they are, but we can maybe identify with any one of those people. There's men, there's women, there's sick, there's healthy, there's a mother and child, there's old, there's young. It's all of us together, you know, drinking from that well. And that's what we're hoping that, you know, will happen in this October. And so, actually, I think you have on your phone there, Father, um, something I wanted to share. Again, it's in the guide, but for those of you who are familiar with the rosary, we'll be, of course, following the different places in the Holy Land where those events took place. Um, the joyful mysteries of the Annunciation, the visitation when Mary visited her cousin Elizabeth, when Jesus was born in the Nativity, his presentation in the temple and all of those. We of course will follow the luminous mysteries that Pope John Paul II introduced in 2002 with his letter about the Rosary, which is also one of the documents you received. And that includes you know, his public life where he's going to be preaching you know, on the Sermon on the Mount, we'll see that, where he calls his, his apostles, actually, where he is baptized, uh, the wedding at Cana. And then, of course, the sorrowful mysteries, his passion, his death, the glorious mysteries, his resurrection, his ascension into heaven. But we also included some more mysteries because the month of October is 31 days and not just 20. And so I wanted to make sure that you understood which mysteries those are. And those are what we deemed, in quotes, because it's a name we gave them. It's the apostolic mysteries. We'll be looking at the way that he interacts with his apostles. And then we have some m mysteries of mercy. Mercy is really the way God loves us, the way we can love others when they're in need. So these are different moments in um, the life of Jesus where we can see how he does that. Uh, from the raising of the widow's son, the widow of Naim. Why does he do that? It, why would he do that? It's a great question to ask. It's a great question to ask him in prayer. We can ask for some light, those goggles from Mary to dive down deep or to open up those curtains, you know, as Jesus does with his mysteries. And so please be sure to take a look at that document. I think it will help uh, quite a bit. It also has a general explanation of why we pray the Our Father, the Hail Mary, where that comes from, why there's 10. It's really just a meditative walking through, giving that time to have that conversation with um, our Lord about what he's trying to say in those moments of his life. So hopefully we can do that together. You certainly are welcome to bring friends and neighbors or family members together to, to live this together. I'd so. like to jump back to 1,000 years, Kathleen. It's always fun to do. Let's do it. So Jesus is coming over here from behind Mount Arbel mm -hmm. between Nazareth and uh, Capernaum. Yes. And he's on his way. Because the uh, Via Maris is right out here, right? Yeah. yeah. We're on the, this track that's connected the famous biblical uh, main freeway, yes. main thoroughfare. <laughs> that's right. So there are kids playing over there. One little kid runs over and he runs in here to one of the shops here in Magla and he says, Mom, Mom, the neighbors are saying Jesus coming. 
Jesus come, go and tell your dad, he's down at the port and he just went down there a few minutes ago. And then go over and stop by uh, Auntie Elizabeth and Zachariah's house and tell them that uh, we need to get into the synagogue because of Jesus coming, we need to get a seat. We've never seen him before. So now everybody's seated down here. Just like we inside are. Inside the synagogue, <laughs> on these seats. And next thing, Jesus is coming in. So you can decide where is he sitting down right now. And you're sitting down right across from him. And you notice your cousins over there and you're sitting with your spouse and with your children and you, your grandma, your, your mom and your dad are there, the grandparents of your children. And then you see some neighbors you don't really like, but they're over there, they're far <laughs> enough away. And next thing, Jesus is in here and he's talking. Maybe he's even sitting here, for example, or in some other spot. And then at some moment, just like we are now, he is looking into your eyes and you are looking into his eyes. And you hear in your heart a question that he asked many times in the gospel. What would you like me to do for you now? So this could be at the, in the soup of this <laughs> pilgrimage, virtual pilgrimage experience. To be letting Jesus ask you that question and to be giving him the answer, prepare the answer for Jesus, what you want to tell him, what you'd like him to do for you now. Um, also, as we, as we finish up this segment, we do have one other segment um, together at the Sea of Galilee, and we'll explain a little bit more about the pilgrimage, and I, I highly suggest that question. Carry it with you. Carry it with you. Carry it with you so you can answer our Lord. And we'll talk a little bit more about that and some of the other things we can do to prepare ourselves well and live this pilgrimage. Say a prayer for Kathleen because she has a big month ahead of her presenting all this pilgrimage for you. Father also, he'll be with you every single day as, as we live the liturgies in the different places together. We'll explain that at the sea. Okay. Sound good? Very good. Thank you so much. God bless you and know that we're praying for you every day from the Holy Land.